children that do have speech, language and communication needs are very good at finding their own strategies, finding ways around dealing with things. I think they're very resilient because it's a long, hard day if you're finding it very difficult and very challenging and not understanding what's happening. So I think they've got a lot of, yeah, resolve. Alfie has got a really great memory and he's, he's always enjoying working on things that he's familiar with. Do anything else at break time? Hot if we Go to coffee club. And what do you have to drink? Yeah. Hot chocolate. Make a hot chocolate. Oh, Is it good? Yeah? And is that everything? Do you ever go outside? Too cold. It's too cold, you're right. This morning I was supporting Cameron in an ICT lesson uh, which was planned by the teacher. Uh, the plan was then given to me to help support him so she basically led the lesson. I just had to make, keep him on task, keeping him focused, making sure that he understood exactly what he was doing. We had the microphone to help him to speak into the computer because he struggles with the writing and the spelling and the, the language side of it. Speech, language and communication difficulties cover a big area, so you're, you can look at children that have non, are non verbal so they have no words to express what they need to say. They might have physical disabilities, so they can't move or direct people or get what they want independently. It might be children that are quite good at expressing themselves, have a lot of verbal language, but their understanding might not be very good, so they need support with their understanding. For children that have got difficulty with understanding, um, they obviously find it difficult to follow what's happening in the class. Children that have expressive language difficulties will find it hard to take part in lessons to show what they've understood. It's really important for us to be aware of what those needs are so that we can do what we can to support them, to enable them to do the best they can. Sometimes the easiest place to start is with parents because quite often um, the parents will have been uh, engaging with other professionals outside of education. The smallest bit of information such as uh, the child hears better from the left side so then you can position them in the classroom um, in order so that they can hear more effectively and sometimes it's the small little things like that that can be helpful. At Torview, we use a total communication approach to providing education for our students. We're using visual timetables, we're using now next boards, so lots of visual strategies. So we'll use PEX, which is a picture exchange communication system to enable non-verbal children to make a request for something that they really want. We might use an eye gaze system, which is more of a high-tech system, where children can look at a screen um, on a grid base and requ make requests. Which one next? Turn around, are you ready? Whee! So by providing a total communication environment and enabling children to understand as much as their abilities will allow them and to give them a voice, this will enable them to engage in school and hopefully have a positive experience and achieve what they can achieve. So when you are trying to um, design a task to suit the whole class, um, it's important not to get too carried away with making something completely separate for children with additional needs, um, but instead to have a look at what it is you would like at the very end of the series of lessons, or that lesson in particular, and then making a decision of what just sometimes just the small changes that can make it accessible um, to children with other needs. So for today, um, in our lesson, it was simply adding a microphone because we knew that Cameron verbally could construct the sentences or the questions that he would like to input on his document. Um, within other lessons the resource we provide might be slightly different and take a different format whether it will be something like a word bank um, that will have images to support his understanding of the vocabulary he's going to use or whether it will be um, physical resources such as cubes within maths or um, dean sticks. So it's actually looking and going back to what could we um, put in place in order for him to achieve that objective and sometimes it is just the smallest thing that can make the big difference for him. If I'm like 
really upset I'm only come to my desk or like if I want to do my work here I can. When you're delivering a story, um, it's really important to use a range of strategies to support learners no matter of their um, speech need. That can range from using Makaton alongside your speech, using picture exchange symbols um, so that pupils can tell you what they've seen, can communicate with you about it. Pupils always love having the real life resources and it's nice to ask the pupils to use them to show you what they've understood. I think any resource that can make a story more sensory is always going to support the, the speech and the language and the communication involved. Pupils have um, their own range of symbols that are relevant to the activity that they're completing um, and they would select a symbol and exchange it. It's all about the exchange to communicate what it is that they want to say. And as they, as they build up the process, they'd get more symbols and a wider range of things that they're able to talk about. A teacher can help to stretch a child with speech and language and communication needs by setting appropriate targets. And these targets need to be hard enough that they challenge the child, but easy enough so the child can access them and doesn't feel overwhelmed. It might be that you start with them um, an easier task and quickly progress into something that stretches them so they get that positive that they can do something giving them a system if they find it difficult to ask for help that they can ask for help so that you can afford to stretch them a little bit because they know if they can't do it they don't have to sit there and struggle. When working with children with speech and uh, language difficulties it's really important not to overload them and um, sometimes in with the greatest intentions by providing them with too many sheets, too many word banks, laminated card, alphabet cards and they end up having a table that's full of resources um, which some of them they might be able to access but actually all together it's just too overwhelming and, and then the child just becomes confused or disengaged with, with what's happening in the lesson and having that, um, that feeling returning of perhaps maybe they can't, they can't achieve or they can't do it and then it then becomes a negative experience. I think it's um, choosing one resource or one thing that you know is going to work well with that child um, and then trialling that and then if it isn't working having a backup plan and giving them something that I think they will be able to achieve but actually if it's not quite working knowing that I've got something else I can provide with just a small tweak then can also work the other way that actually if they're handling it really well can then um, give them something more challenging. There are a whole range of strategies that a new teacher could use to support a learner with difficulties um, and I think one that's particularly useful is effective questioning um, and using questioning can cover a whole range of levels so it can be on a very basic concrete level um, at the beginning but it can also be brought to really challenge pupils as well and draw out that understanding that they've taken. When you leave school, when you're, you've finished and you've gone to FE and then school's finished and you need to leave, what do you want to be? Job. You want to get a job? <laughs> what job do you want at to be? work. Do you want to do some art? Do you want to dance be an artist? Dance teacher. A dance teacher, fantastic. <laughs> they might not have the, the physical skills to communicate with somebody. They might not have the confidence to do so because of that problem that's there. If we're able to provide them with the right strategies to be able to talk to other people and socialise and learn skills like eye contact, um, that will give them an all round more positive experience. When I'm talking to Cameron, I would keep my sentences short, keep instructions one at a time, think about the vocabulary that he may be using. If a child with speech, language and communication needs is displaying challenging behaviour in the class, it's really important to know communicative strengths of that child and also the areas of need, so knowing what that child finds difficult. Making sure that what you're asking that child to do is within their capabilities. If that child struggles to engage in all lessons, you might need to set up a system of a a little bit of work and a reward sort of system and then gradually build up the time they work gets longer and longer and the reward time gets reduced just to try and get them engaged in the lesson. It's really important to have a good relationship with your learning support assistant, going to them with your plan in advance um, and the resources and having a discussion about what you both think is going to work um, with the child in question.
Children with additional needs, it's really important that they have a voice because they're the ones that know best what's difficult and what makes life easier for them. Often just during a normal class activity, a child might struggle to feel the ability to communicate and so it's really important that we put the strategies in place to support them at those times. It's, it's not just about the physical difficulty that they've got, it's about the the confidence and the resilience to have a try and to use the strategies that they've got in place um, to do that as well. There are websites that schools can visit which will give some basic information on um, communication. Aphasic is one website that you might go to look at some communication. Um, colourful semantics is an approach we use to support expressive language. It doesn't really matter how long you've been teaching, the Senko is such a vital role within the school um, and a person to go to for any advice that you need uh, regarding a child. Um, like with um, having a discussion with an LSA, a Senko can again give you um, another idea, some more information that you weren't aware of um, and other resources um, that can really support a child in the classroom.